What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and today we're going to be looking at part one of the Sound Sculptor EQ573. It's a Neve 1073 EQ. It's going to be an awesome build series once again, so let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel guys and as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe and if you've got any questions about this build or any of the other DIY builds I do on this channel make sure you hit me up in those comment sections down below. Now this video has been a long time coming I actually built a pair of these EQs a little while ago but it's taken me a little while with the studio move and all that kind of crazy stuff to actually get to putting this video up so I hope you enjoy it. It's an amazing EQ created by Sound Sculptor. And as I said, it's based on the Neve 1073. And if you're looking at building this particular EQ, it's a bit of a tricky build. So stick with me in the video and you'll see how complicated it gets. But that's enough from me. Let's get into the build. So first up, you're gonna have this motherboard, which is your main PCB board and a bunch of daughter boards. And you have to just snap these three daughter boards apart and then make sure you file them just with the general file to make sure all the boards are smooth and will fit together nicely. And then you wanna grab your bag of components with your resistors and diodes and sort them out in a way that uh, is gonna help you find them easily. And I like to measure them and double check the values and then put them in ascending order. And that way I can find them really quickly when I'm populating the boards. And once that's done, you're ready to start populating the motherboard PCB. And as you can see here, the first components that we're gonna solder to the board are these diodes. These are some Zener diodes. And we've got a couple of other diodes that are gonna go in the board as well. And basically with diodes, you wanna always remember that they are directional. So you have to make sure that the uh, thicker line matches up with the line, the little black line or silver line on these Zener diodes. Um, and make sure that that is correct to the marking on the PCB. So if you get this wrong, you might end up with a burnt component. So be very careful with that. And as I flip the board here to solder these components, you'll see that I've gently bent the legs as I've been pushing them through the PCB. And then all you need to do is add a little bit of solder to the iron and then bring your solder and your iron to the area you want to solder and hold it there for a second and it'll gently melt onto those connection points. And then once you've done that, you can snip all the legs and then you can flip the board and start on the resistors. And if you've followed my earlier instructions and actually gone ahead and labeled all of the resistor values to the little paper tags, this next part becomes a lot easier. So all you have to do is check the bill of materials sheet and then find the right resistor to where it goes on the board. And I just, as you can see here, mark off the resistors that I've installed so I don't make any mistakes in installing resistors in, certain, in maybe the wrong places. And I just go through it kind of like a Lego puzzle. Uh, you find the right resistor for the right parts and just start at the top of the list and go through and populate the motherboard. And then once you've put in all of the resistors for the motherboard, you can just check the orientation and then start getting to soldering all the legs. And when you've got this many components in the board, it can be quite tricky to get to obviously all of the different legs. So what I do is I start on the outside components and get to the ones that are easier to get access to and solder those. Then I'll snip those ones and then that'll give me access and I kind of just work my way towards the center of the components and go that way and just take your time as you solder these and don't rush it and just make sure you get nice flow of your solder onto the connection points and just make sure that you, you know, have done a good job. And once you've added resistors 17 to 66, you're ready to flip the board and do the test pins. And these test pins can be a little bit tricky to push into the board. So sometimes I'll use like some tape or something and um, push down hard on these pins to get them forced right into the board without kind of hurting my finger because they can be quite 
tough to push through the PCB sockets there. And then all you need to do is flip the board and solder these test pins and then snip the legs on the other side of the board. And then next up, we have to populate some uh, yellow uh, ceramic capacitors to put in. So it's pretty easy. We just put them in, bend the legs, flip the board, solder them, and then snip them. And then the next part of this job is probably the biggest and most time consuming uh, part of this job where we've got to put in all of the film capacitors, these Weimar film capacitors. And there's a lot of them because it's an EQ circuit. So um, what I suggest is to start putting some of them in and instead of doing what I did where I actually did the whole bunch of capacitors put them in the board and then taped them down all at once and then um, soldered them from the other side, I would actually break this into parts and do a smaller section. And the reason is because when I did it this way, um, the first time it was kind of a bit janky and some of the capacitors um, kind of came out of the board a little bit. So like they weren't out of the board, but they were not flat and flush to the board as I'd like. Um, so what you want to do is actually just put in maybe, you know, 10 capacitors or 12 capacitors or something like that, and then tape up that section, solder those, and then move on to the next section because there's a lot of capacitors to go in here. Um, so just break it up into sections, tape them down to keep them in place. Definitely do that um, because otherwise they'll fall out of the board and then solder away. And that way you'll avoid what I had to do here, which was then later go in and kind of hold my iron to some of the legs and push these capacitors and straighten them out. And that was really quite a pain in the butt. And yeah, so just do smaller batches of capacitors at a time, keep them neat, and then you won't have to do what I did. <laughs> And then next up, there's a couple of tantalum capacitors. Now these are polarized, which means they have a positive and a negative leg. The positive leg will always be the longer leg. So make sure you put this lead into the hole that says plus. Um, otherwise you'll get some problems later on when you power up this unit. And just make sure you solder those legs neat and snip them and then flip the board. And then there's a two by eight pins header to go on C and three A. And what I do with these kind of header components is put them in the board and then whilst holding my finger to them, I flip the board over and have some solder on my iron and just kind of melt a bit of um, solder on one of the legs to hold the header connector in place on the board. And then what you can do is Sometimes you have to do this to maybe two legs, but do that first and that'll hold it in place. And then what I do is I'll solder the rest of the legs and then go back over the kind of dodgy soldering job I do on the first leg to hold it in place, just to make sure that that one isn't a cold joint because you might have to kind of just wipe the solder on when you do that, when holding the component and the board. So just make sure you re-solder that first join, um, make sure it's nice and neat as well. And then you should be all good. And then there's another connector here, the socket for CN 4A. Do the same thing, put a bit of solder on that leg to hold it in place and then check it's all nice and straight and then go ahead and solder all the legs to the board and then give them a snip. And then next up are six transistors from Q1 to Q6. And all you need to do is make sure to be very careful to install these transistors in the right orientation. They have three legs and a semicircle shape. So just make sure that the semicircle shape of the transistor lines up with what you see on the print on the circuit board on the PCB. Make sure that the flat side of the transistor lines up with the flat side on the PCB, be very careful with that as you install all of these and you shouldn't have a problem. And just remember with transistors, they can be heat sensitive sometimes. So just what I do is solder one leg of each of them and then go back around and solder another leg of each of them and then solder the third leg of each of them. And then that way they have a chance to cool down before you get to the next leg on each component. And then once you've soldered all of those legs, give them a snip. 
And then the next component to add are these relays, and there's only two of them, and I do the same thing as with some of those bigger components where I just add a bit of solder to the leg to hold it in place. And then once that's held in place, I go through and solder all the other legs and then go back over that original leg that I held in place with a bit of dab of solder just to make sure that that's a nice join as well. And then the next component to go in the board are a bunch of electrolytic capacitors. And just remember with electrolytic capacitors, they are polarized. So they have a longer leg or the leg that lines up with the silver strip on the capacitor. That is the negative leg. So make sure that goes in the negative hole, obviously, and the other leg goes in the hole with the plus. So that way you avoid potentially blowing up your capacitors. And then once you've placed these in correctly and double checked, what I do is solder one of the legs and then flip the board and check the orientation and make sure the capacitor is actually sitting in the board straight and then go ahead and solder the other leads. And once they're all soldered, you can go ahead and snip the legs. And then last but not least for this board are the inductors and they have these values and part numbers on them and just make sure that the two of them go in their right place on the board. There needs to be a gap between the inductors and the PCB surface to avoid any electrical contact between the metal parts and the pads. So what you do is put some adhesive tape um, that comes in the kit uh, onto the bottom of the inductor between the pins. What I do with these, like always, is solder one of the legs, hold it in place, and then flip the board and solder the rest of them. And then just make sure you get a really nice connection on each of the legs of the inductors. And that's basically it for the main board. And what you need to do is just do a visual check and make sure you haven't missed any components and brush the side with the toothbrush to make sure you remove any remaining soldering bits. And that's basically it for the main PCB board. In the next videos, we'll be doing the components on the other boards for the switches and all that cool stuff. So stick around, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. So that's it for part one of the EQ573 build from Sound Sculptor. I hope you've enjoyed this build video. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit me up in those comment sections down below if you have any questions about this build or any of the other builds I do on this channel. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.